Hello. Today, these videos are going to be all about lesson 1 2 called Where Does the Time Go? And it all starts with this student schedule of how they spend their time. And I'm going to show you their schedule here. <clears throat> so they use different letters to represent how they spend their time throughout the day. And we're going to tally those up. And I'm going to give those to you. And they are the hour spent on class tallied up to be 15 and then 32 for homework, 54 for sleep, 15 also for work and 52 for other. <clears throat> So it says without adding these up, what should it be? Well, if you have seven hours per day, right? Um, sorry, 24 hours per day available to you, right? And then you have seven days per week, then we can cross out our days and multiply 24 times seven, and that should be 168 hours per week. So we should have a total of 168. <clears throat> okay, most college advisors will tell you that a good rule of thumb is for every hour that you're in class, you should spend two hours of study time outside of class. So if they're in class for 15, then they should be spending 15 times two, or 30 hours of study, right? And it looks like they are spending 32. So yes, they are studying for 32 hours. So it looks like they're spending enough time on that. That's good. <clears throat> One really good way to analyze how much time you're spending on different activities is by computing percentages. So we have to remember that a percentage is a part to a whole multiplied by 100 because a percent is always per 100. So if we want to set to figure out what percentage of time do we spend in class, we would take the part of hours that were class, which would be 15 and divide by 168 and multiply by 100 and we would find out that it rounds up to the nearest percent of 9%. And then when we do the same thing for homework, we're going to get approximately 19%, 32%, 9%, and 31%. And sometimes you have to round appropriately to be able to make sure that they add up to be 100% of your time. <clears throat> Question number seven says, studies have shown that college students get about six and a half hours of sleep per night on average, but that academic achievement improves when students average eight hours of sleep. What percentage of the hours in a week would be devoted to sleep if you got six and a half hours of sleep per night? And what percent would be if you got eight? How do you feel our friend from question one is doing when it comes to sleep? So 6.5 per night times seven nights would be 45.5 hours sleep for the week and eight hours a night times seven would be 56 sleep per week. And our friend is getting 54. So they're right in the middle. Um, oh, and it says, what percentage would these be? So this one would be 45 out of 168, which would be 
27%. And then this 56 out of 168 would be 33%. <clears throat> and our friend is spending 32%. So they're right in between. Our friend is doing pretty well. <clears throat> So one thing we can also do when we talk about percentages, if we have um, <clears throat> for a topic, if we have all available answers, which means we would have 100% of our, like for instance, um, this is how the person spent 100% of their time it adds up to 100. We can also display this graphically using a pie graph. Um, pie graphs or pie charts <clears throat> are usually just displayed in degrees. And we usually split up a pie chart into 360 degrees. And we usually use this symbol, kind of like when we're talking about temperature, but it's not temperature. Okay. So on question number eight, it says, use the procedure from cell from example one to find the number of degrees in a pie chart that would correspond to each activity in the chart from question six. So I'm going to put my percentages over here so that I can they can help me figure out my degrees. So my percentages were 9, 19, 32, 9, and 31. <clears throat> so for class, 9% would be 9% of 360 or 0.09 times 360. And um, that comes out to be 32.4 degrees, but it does say round the nearest whole degrees. So we're going to run that to 32. And then the next one is going to be 0 0.19 times 360. And that comes out to be 68.4. And then we have the next one comes out to be 115.2 degrees. And then we have another 32.4. And then we have 111.6. So when we round these, um, we kind of have to round them. So I ended up rounding this one up to 69. This one did 115 and this one again to 32 so that they total 360 degrees. <clears throat> then they're asking us to create a pie graph. Uh, to display these degrees. And so what I did was I started with my first one at 32 degrees and I had to fill in my pie so that I kind of know what these other tick marks are between zero and 90. So it starts at zero and it goes around to 90, 180, 270, and then back to zero or 360. So it looks like each of these are 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. <clears throat> and my first one is 32. So I'm going to start at zero and I'm going to go over between the 20 and the 30. I'm going to go just past the 30 for 32. And I'm going to make this right here. This part of my pie right here looks like it's for class. <clears throat> And then I need another 69 degrees to represent homework. So what I did was if I add these two together, I get just over 100. So I get 101 and then 100 should be right here. And so I'm going to just go to calculate the difference of 69 for homework. I'm just going to go to where my total is because that's easier to find. So it's just right about there at 100. And so I know this space here is the difference. And so that's for homework. And then if I add another 115 to that, I know that I'm at 101 plus 115. So I'm about at 216. And so 180 is here. So 190, 200, 210, 220. So I know that 216 is right in between there. <clears throat> so I know that this space right in here is going to be my sleep space. And then I'm going to add in another 32, and that's going to get me to 248. 
And this is 270, this is 220. So we have 230, 240, 250. So this one should be right before 250, so 248. So this part of my pie is going to be for work. And then that leaves the rest of my circle for other fun activities. And there we have it. <clears throat> So that's how you make a circle graph. You find the percentages, and sometimes you're given a circle graph and you have to do some estimating. So on the worksheet for um, this section, you're gonna be looking at a circle graph and you're gonna be doing some estimating, like where do I think, um, actually it's for less than 1.3's worksheet, but you're gonna be doing some estimating on getting a graph and then estimating what you think the sections, what percentage of the pie you think the sections are. The rest of this um, section is all about reading some graphs. And a, a graph that we're gonna learn how to read here is a bar graph. A bar graph is used, um, a bar graph and a pie graph are both used for um, qualitative data. So data that does not, it's not numerical and it doesn't have to go in an order. So um, this was asking, they asked a the question of, um, likely voters in 2016 were asked two questions about the four candidates for US president. Who are you planning to vote for? And which of the candidates do you think are qualified to be president? So um, this is who they plan to vote for. There was blue for Clinton, Trump, uh, Johnson, Stein, and undecided. Um, and you can see that the percentages add up to be 100. And then they said, who do you think is qualified to be president? And so they had Clinton, and we'd have to do some estimating here. It's just about 60%. And Trump was just under 40%. Johnson was just over 40%. And Stein was just over 30. Um, and so it says, why did we choose a pie chart for the first uh, question and a bar graph for the second? So the pie graph is because they added to 100%. And not just because they added to 100%, because each person, when they asked the question, who are they going to vote for, they could only choose one. So everybody's answer only goes into this one time. Here, they're asking the, um, they're asked the question, which of the candidates do you think are qualified to be president? And so somebody might have said, I think Clinton's qualified and I think Stein is qualified. So they could have answered um, two different answers because a respondent could have answered two or more choices. So that's important. <clears throat> so those are the big things there between the pie graph and the um, bar, bar graph. And then um, in class, we also I also asked you to work on this. Um, it was first we gave you a, um, a table here: percentage of households having various types of pets. So six point one percent of households people said that they had a bird. Forty two point nine percent said they had a cat. Fifty four point four percent said they had a dog. Thirteen point six percent said they had a fish. Okay, um, and so. Here, I could answer, I have a bird, a cat, and a dog, right? And so because I can answer any of these choices, this would not be good for a circle graph. This would be best for the bar graph. Um, and then this question says, which exotic animal would you most like to have as a pet? So this means I have to choose one. To choose one. So in that case, they should add it up to be 100. So 34, 40, 50, 60, 74, and 100%. So that's why we would do this data here in the pie graph, okay? And we would make that pie graph very similar to how we made the one on the prior sheet, okay? And then the last grouping of problems here that we were having you look at, um, for 1.2 was which issues are serious problems for our country? 
And so the people that said that they were Republican answered in the reds and the people that said they were Democrats answered in the blues. It says what issue was seen as serious by most respondents overall? So I would say it looks like cost of college education seems to be the highest for the Republicans and the highest for the Democrats. So cost of education, cost of college education. And then it says, what issue showed the greatest divide between Democrats and Republicans? And so how I would decide this one is I would probably look to see which one is there the biggest difference between the red and the blue. And it looks like equal access to economic opportunity looks like it's the biggest concern. Equal access to economic opportunity. Again, I use the difference between the length of the bars to decide. What percentage of Democrats felt like immigration policy was a serious problem? So immigration was blue, and that looks to be, I would say, maybe around 23%. And they don't, they definitely, that's one where they are definitely lower than that's the only one actually where um, Republicans seem to be more concerned than Democrats. And what about what about Republicans? So one that um, the Republicans are um, what percent for the Republicans? And that was just over thirty, so I'd say maybe thirty-two percent. Um, it says of the two political parties, which would you say had the most positive outlook on the current state of the country? And I would definitely say which issues are serious problems. Um, it looks to me like the Republicans are the most positive outlook because they're not as concerned about um, the gridlock between the parties. Um, they're not quite as concerned about the cost of health care. Um, not quite as concerned about the cost of education. They're concerned about immigration. So I, I would say they're Republicans, but I could see where, depending on what you're looking at, you would choose one or the other. So there's no right or wrong answer for number six. Okay. And that was all I'd ask you to work on for this lesson. So I will catch you back for lesson 1.3.